Good morning, this is John Lucas. Um, I was asked to do a demo on how you hollow ingrain. So many people are having problems pulling it out of the chuck. Uh, the first thing you do, of course, is make, you have to make a proper tenon um, and insert in the chuck. If you don't have a tenon in the chuck so that it can bottom out on the top, the piece wants to vibrate like this and eventually will come out. So it's good to have a shoulder on those tenons. I'll show that in another video. <clears throat> what I'm going to do this morning is I'm going to hollow. Well, the other problem people have is they're feeding from the outside in. On ingrain turning, you need to feed from the center out. When you try to feed from the outside in, it's going to kick your tool back and it's going to pull it out of the chuck almost every time. So feed from the inside out. The tools I'm going to be using, I'm going to start with a half-inch spindle gouge. I grind mine using my bowl gouge, bowl gouge jig so that I have these shoulders. I think it cuts a little bit cleaner when I do that. The other tool I'm going to show you is a negative rake scraper. You could use a regular scraper to do this. If you use a scraper, you're going to have to center drill it first. The other tool I'm going to use, which is the one I use a lot nowadays, is the Hunter Viceroy. It's a cupped carbide cutter. And it actually cuts instead of scrapes. You use it like a scraper. In other words, I'm holding it flat and I'm just uh, cutting from the center out. Although I can push it straight in if I've already pre-bored a hole. But let's start with the spindle gouge first. This is the most traditional method that people used for years. <clears throat> and uh, I'm probably running about 1500 RPM on that. Um, you have to go exactly in the center. If you go in the center, it works like a drill. I can actually push it straight in. I've got the flute pointed toward the left, and I'm cutting like this. Now, you don't want to cut straight across. You can, but that creates the most chatter. It really fights you when you do that. You're much better off to cut at about 45 degrees. Each time I push in a little further, push in, cut out. Now to show you how to use a scraper, the first thing I'm going to do is center drill it, at least the fairways. This is, of course, much easier done when you have a tailstock. Same technique, but I can go, I can kind of go in both directions, although it's going to fight you more. It's always going to fight me in the center right now because I drilled it by hand instead of with a chuck. The other tool I like to use is this Hunter Viceroy. I think it's actually a lot easier. First of all, it's a smaller cutter. The advantage, the advantage of the Viceroy tool over the flat scrapers is that the tool's cutting, so the tool doesn't dull. When you're scraping and you're rubbing that wood across that outer edge, it dulls that edge really quickly. Because this is actually cutting, it's not doing that. And you see, I can push straight in. goes very quickly with that tool. I like it a lot. I'm going to go back to this tool again just to show you. Spindle gouge. The downside of a standard spindle gouge is that I can only get the tool rest in there so far. And so I'm hanging a lot of tool over the rest. If you'll notice, this tool is quite a bit beefier because it's an inch wide. It won't chatter quite as much. And the hunter tool, it's a square shank. So the Viceroy is even beefier. So it's very easy, I think, to cut really deep. That's as far as my center hole drill is. <laughs> I can 
can cut in both directions with that tool. Since I put these flutes in here, I can't make the I can't make that as thin. It's getting kind of thin right now. But anyway, that's uh <coughs> excuse me. You would just continue with those tools till you get all the way to the bottom. The tool I use to measure the depth on these is homemade. I took a jigsaw and just ran a cut like that. You could do that with a bandsaw, of course. Um, and then I added this uh, carriage bolt on there so I can tighten it up. And I would set this for my bottom depth, which I want to be right about there. And I'd simply go in here and measure it. Very simple tool to build. I actually got this design, I think, from Richard Raffin. Very easy to do. Uh, but I hope that helps you all in hollowing out uh, boxes. Sorry about that, I'll probably blow in there a dozen times. Another tool that I use to finish, to finish off my box interiors or my vessels <clears throat> is a Hunter number five tool. Uh, this is an older one, this was, this was originally called a number four, but they changed the name on it. The tool's mounted flat. You never use that tool in this position. It will grab on you big time. You always use it like this, and by swinging the tool out, I'm actually shear cutting. To go across the bottom of the vessel, I actually go in there and I find the bevel. I'm not going to do that right now because I haven't hollowed it far enough, but I'll show you how it's used as a shear scraper. And by uh, cutting it Carefully, I can get a really clean cut on there, shear scrape. It needs to go a little bit more. I tore out too much wood a while ago. little bit cleaner that wouldn't require very much sanding maybe 220 possibly 180 back in there <clears throat> normally I take a little bit more time if I was going across the bottom you can see some tear out in there <clears throat> if I want to use it as a bevel rubbing tool I don't know if I can do it with my hand my tripod's getting in the way so as I get over there I rotate it and I shear scrape because I can't bevel rub at that point. <clears throat> but I think you can see in there, it's almost shiny in the bottom. That's from where I was rubbing the bevel. So if we're doing boxes, it's incredibly good. I shear scrape up the side and the shear scrape cleans it well enough. <clears throat> I believe he calls it a number five badger. Yeah, it's a wonderful tool. Anyway, that's it for this morning. I just wanted to try out my new microphone and I wanted to be able to show you how, uh, how I hollow vessels.